Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. John Belkowitz here, Director of R&D at Intelligent Concrete. I wanted to take some time this morning to go over a short portion of some of my research from the PhD dissertation I've got published. Um, this was probably my most, not probably, this is definitely my most favorite test that I did during my research. And uh, I took this from the British Standard 7943 Alkali Silica Reactivity Gel Pat Test. And this was a, a modification uh, done, I believe, by, oh, I forgot the gentleman's name, Santanero. Anyway, uh, instead of it being a two-week test, it was a 72-hour test, and then I believe it was adopted by ASTM. We'll put a link below for... Uh, a little more information on the test. What I love about the test, though, it's a non-destructive means of looking at the development of the ASR gel in a controlled environment. And it's a very quick test, too. This was only a 72-hour test. Uh, and the gel pat is um, compromised of uh, 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 coarse aggregate, one to two millimeters, uh, your cementitious matrix, uh, about 0.47 on the water cementitious ratio. You cure it up in a, a one inch diameter, one inch tall mold. And then um, after 24 hours, you abrade the surface and then cure it again for 72 hours in a simulated cement pour solution. Uh, and then from there, you do an area fraction analysis doing optical microscopy. But my favorite part is uh, using an uh, uh, environmental scanning electron microscope to look at the surface topography, um, the gel structure, and then the uh, mass species of the alkali silica gel. And what you see here, what this uh, photo is going back and forth between left side is the ASR gel from the reference or the ASR gel pad made with just cement. And then the image on the right is the ASR gel from the ASR gel pad test that had uh, nano silica in it. And even with, by the untrained eye, you can see a, a difference between the two gels. And if you've never seen an ASR gel rosette, it's Oh, it's absolutely beautiful. I mean, the, the term rosette is used well. And then when you zoom into an ASR gel rosette, and I should do another video on that, you get to see these wheat-like and wispy-like fibrils that you see on the left-hand side right there. And that's what makes up the morphology of the normal ASR gel, the standard ASR gel. And it's part of that wispy wheat-like strands um, it's, it's very important that morphology that uh, makes it possible for the water to continuously imbibe or be drawn into the ASR gel with those alkalis to keep this ASR gel, uh, you know, th uh, thriving and surviving. You know, going from immature or mature to immature gel. When you look over with the nano silica, you see that the structure has changed. Those wispy like fibers creating that. You know, smaller capillaries, they're gone. It's almost like there's a, um, you know, a generic opening or a, an arbitrary opening in uh, throughout the, the morphology, throughout the microstructure. And it's a larger opening than those wispy or wheat-like fibers that are placed together. Uh, and it, it really is you know, quite exquisite to see this change in structure and of course, with that, with that larger opening, you don't have that capillary absorption. But not only that, when we were doing the uh, electrons uh, or environmental scanning electron microscope, we also used a, um, that energy dispersive X-ray analysis to look at the mass species of the gels. And what we found is with the nano silica enhanced mix, you had less of the calcium in the gel. Uh, you also had less sodium less potassium, but you had more silica. Um, and, and with that, we did some concurrent tests using the ASTMC 1567 and 1260s. And what we saw was a lower degree of expansion. So we're robbing 
the alkali silica gels of the alkalis, but we're feeding it the silicas, ultimately getting the past the pessimum or the environment where this ASR gel can thrive and survive. Now, why does this happen? How does the nanosilica do that? First and foremost, the reason why we see this increase in the amount of silica we believe is because of this nano silica. We're feeding the system uh, as uh, all this silica, this reactive silica, uh, nonetheless. Uh, the other thing that we're seeing is when we use nano silica, we have not only accelerated cement dissolution, but also this calcium silicate hydrate seeding effect from instantaneous posilonic reaction and heterogeneous nucleation. In doing so, not only are we creating a, a, a denser structure, but we're using up some of those byproducts, some of that pore solution that would um, you know, uh, feed that alkali silica reactive system or reaction altogether. So if we rob that alkali silica reaction, not only of the alkalis, but also of that solution, that acquiesce solution, we're going to break down that system. And by feeding it more silica, we're also making that system a little bit more brittle and a little less viscoelastic. And we saw a presence of that in the gels uh, that had this nanosilica or with those samples that had the nanosilica, the gels had more cracking to them. And again, jump into my PhD. I think it's chapter five or six that goes into it. And there are hundreds of pictures that we took, not only the top surface, but also of the different sites at different magnifications. Looking at this gel, I just go into a lot more depth and detail. And there's just some beautiful, beautiful photos in there or images, excuse me. Um, one of the other things that we do see from the nano silica is not that we're just using that byproduct up, that calcium hydroxide to create more of that backbone of concrete strength, but it's also those alkalis, um, the sodiums and the potassiums that contribute to that alkali growth or that alkali silica growth. We find that they're bound more in the hydrated cement matrix, not only because we're using up that pore solution, also because we're densifying the hydrated cement matrix and ultimately chemically binding these alkalis that would normally transport through the percolation or pore connectivity of our hydrated cement matrix. So a lot of reasons as to why, um, you know, the nano silica enhances uh, concrete to resist the deleterious nature of alkali silica reactivity. Not only check out the PhD uh, that I put together on this, the impact of nano silica size and surface area on mitigation of alkali silica reactivity, but also check out the patent that I have on this and uh, identify how, or, or excuse me, see how you can use nano silica as a tool in your toolbox to uh, you know, mitigate one of the one of the nastiest failure mechanisms in the concrete industry. Hopefully, you learned something today. Have a great day! Don't forget to like and subscribe. Ding that bell for notifications. Go concrete, beat asphalt.